Hugh Freeze made his first public comments yesterday since resigning as the head coach of Ole Miss football last week amid a scandal in which his phone record showed he had used a university-issued phone to call a number associated with a female escort service. Freeze told USA Today Sports, God is good, even in difficult times. Wonderful wife and family, and that's my priority. I know I'm going to meet with my pastor tonight. Freeze did not comment on the resignation. During that interview, Bomani, your reaction beyond <laughs> the head shake to Hugh Freeze. I mean, the head shake actually is the encapsulation of everything <laughs> that I think on this one. I want to give him a pro tip, and I think that this is very important because let's be honest, part of the intrigue of why people are interested in Hugh Freeze getting caught calling the escort is not just simply the bad move of calling the escort on the work phone and then us finding out. It's the fact that he has very publicly put his religious beliefs in front of people, right, in a way that many would call sanctimonious. And yes, by many, I mean me, right? <laughs> then this happens and we're looking at you like, oh, is that right? So now after this has happened, you've lost your job. You can't now say I'm going to talk to my pastor and people not roll their eyes at you. Now, I understand completely. This is probably a really good time to go see your pastor. Perhaps maybe see if he's got a second room so you do not have to sleep on the couch. But if you had already had the religion before, you can't come find it after in the time of scandal, right? It's got to be an alternating Correct. sort of situation. Right now, nobody wants to hear that from you. If that's all you have to say, there is no interview for you to do right now. All there is for you to say is, I apologize to my wife. And say that over and over again. That might work. It is important to note that this is not about the sin in question. We can have a long and complicated conversation about sex work and the ethics and politics therein, but this is about a salesman who defrauded people and is trying to defraud people again using the same exact tactic. Like, I get that this job is one where it makes sense. Yes, if you're trying to get into other living rooms of other families that God and redemption, those are important themes to you. And the most generous case for Hugh Freeze would be that he has a real problem that he's trying to deal with and religion is his way, the only way he knows how to deal with what ails him. But that's not what he's saying. He's just using the same boilerplate language of a guy who got one over on everybody by talking about this stuff. I think on the scale of deviance in this way, of, of religion being used to cover up behavior that is specifically in violation of said religion, he's not Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino, <laughs> I think, has set the scale for us. Put him at one end of the spectrum. Hugh Freeze is below that. So that said, he just needs to have a different game now. Yeah. Speak to something that would make you more relatable as somebody who needs help as opposed to somebody who's trying to preach his way out of it. Yeah, like you have to, you have to, if you want to go into the religious element, you need to kind of testify your way out of this. Correct. Right? Like you need, if you, this is the approach that you are going to take, then you need to bear all in front of the world or in some way to kind of do this. But what he's doing right now, Bill Withers at the line, it don't do too much good to be talking, brother, if ain't nobody listening. Nobody <laughs> is listening to this from you. In fact, the only people who are listening to this from you are people People like me who were only listening so they can laugh at you and the laughter by the way like we need to reestablish all this wasn't trying to fire Hugh Freeze no they were they trying everything they could so not many do. opportunities <laughs> number one you didn't have to call the escort service number two you didn't have to call the escort service mm -hmm. on your work phone number three when the allegations came out between you and Houston Nutt, you didn't have to blame Houston Nutt. And when those processes proceeded and there came to be some sort of uh, file that could be analyzed and these phone records, you could have redacted the number. <laughs> and you didn't. Well, that's the thing. There are two levels of this. When we talk about investigation with Ole Miss, right? There is the NCAA investigation, and they appear to be done for in this. Then there's the other level, which is the Houston Nutt lawsuit, where he just, all he wanted was somebody to say sorry because he claimed all the body violations were on him and they weren't and the belief is that it came from freeze which again goes back to this religion thing right the idea that he called reporters and told this lie they could have gotten out of it if they just apologized to Houston Nutt they did not so now that lawsuit is going to go on and going to continue and motivates people to put in their own Freedom of Information Act requests Correct. so they can go through your phone numbers and man how SEC is all of this <laughs> and so do you think do you guys think that Ole Miss has a prayer at this point, like, what do they do? Like, what do you do? They were done the second that Kim DJ and Treadwell showed up on campus in Tunsil. The second those three guys got there, they were done. Because one Hilarious. thing in college football, 
You can't show that. Like, if you are Ole Miss, right or wrong, you're not allowed to have guys that good. Once that happened, the investigation is coming. And they're investigating to the point where they talked to one player's brother who cuts hair, and they couldn't understand how he said, <laughs> unless there was some illegal benefit, how he was cutting hair and paying the note on the car. And he's like, well, you know, 20 guys on the team will come over. I'll cut all their hair. And the NCAA investigators, you can't pay that much. And he had to explain to them, okay, some of us get our hair cut every week because we have to get our hair cut every week. And the NCAA investigator just couldn't grasp the frequency <laughs> with which, shall we say, football players were getting their hair cut. This is where they are. If there's anything there, they're going to try to find it, and they're playing dirty pool to get it. Like, it's going to be ugly on the back end for Ole Miss. As someone who recently lost his barber hairstylist person and is struggling to find someone who can cut incredibly straight Asian hair, Let's just say that the barbering practices between cultures are a blind spot. They are a Stop blind spot for the NCAA <laughs> and for many people in our world, yes.